സാർ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ചെയ്തോട്ടെ ഓക്കേ ഓക്കേ നമസ്കാരം മുഖ്യാതിഥി ഡോക്ടർ കിരൺ മാം അസിസ്റ്റന്റ് പ്രൊഫസർ പ്രൊഫസർ സെൻട്രൽ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ഓഫ് ജമ്മു മട്ടലാശാൻ സെന്റർ ഫോർ ഹ്യൂമൻ എംപവർമെന്റിന്റെ കോ ഓർഡിനേറ്റർ ഡോക്ടർ വിപിൻ കെ വർഗീസ് സാർ എൻ സി സി കോ ഓർഡിനേറ്റർ ലഫ്റ്റനന്റ് രനീഷ് ജോസഫ് സാർ മട്ടലാശാൻ സെന്റർ ഫോർ ഹ്യൂമൻ എംപവർമെന്റിന്റെ സ്റ്റുഡന്റ് കോർഡിനേറ്റേഴ്സ് ഏബൽ ജോമോൺ ഡയാന ജോൺ ജസ്റ്റിൻ ജോ മാത്യു മറ്റ് അധ്യാപകരെ സുഹൃത്തുക്കളെ എഴുപത്തിയഞ്ചാം സ്വാതന്ത്ര്യ ദിനത്തോടനുബന്ധിച്ച് നടക്കുന്ന ആസാദിക്ക അമൃത മഹോത്സവത്തിന്റെ ഭാഗമായി കുര്യാക്കോസ് ഗ്രിഗോറിയസ് കോളേജിലെ മണത്തിലാശാൻ സെന്റർ ഫോർ ഹ്യൂമൻ എംപവർമെന്റിന്റെ നേതൃത്വത്തിൽ എൻ എസ് എസ് എൻ സി സി ഇ ബി എസ് പി ഐ ക്യു എസ് സിയുമായി സഹകരിച്ച് നടത്തുന്ന ഭാരതീയം പരിപാടിയുടെ യൂണിറ്റി ഇൻ ഡൈവേഴ്സിറ്റി എന്ന സെക്ഷനിലേക്ക് എല്ലാവർക്കും സ്വാഗതം ആദ്യമായി സ്വാഗത പ്രസംഗത്തിനായി മടത്തിലാശാൻ സെന്റർ ഫോർ ഹ്യൂമൻ എംപവർമെന്റിന്റെ കോ ഓർഡിനേറ്ററായ ഡോക്ടർ വിപിൻ കെ വർഗീസ് സാറിനെ ക്ഷണിക്കുന്നു Government of India started an initiative titled Asadi Kamadha Mahalasov to commemorate the same. In connection with this government initiative, our college also organized a series of programs under the label Bharatiya. Unity in Diversity is one among the different programs conducted under Bharatiya. Under the theme, eminent resource patients share information regarding the state where they belong to. The current session is the fifth lecture in this series. Today we have Dr. Kiran, Assistant Professor, Sun University, Jammu Kashmir to deliver a lecture on Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. On behalf of KG College, I wholeheartedly welcome her to this program. I also extend a warm welcome to all the teachers and students who have joined the session. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. ജമ്മുവിലെ സെൻട്രൽ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റിയിൽ ഒമ്പത് വർഷത്തെ പരിചയം സർവകലാശാലയുടെ അക്കാദമിക് കോർപ്പറേറ്റ് ജീവിതത്തിൽ സജീവമായ സംഭാവന നൽകുന്ന വ്യക്തി യു ജി സി മാനേജ്മെന്റിലെ പഠനഫലത്തെ അടിസ്ഥാനമാക്കിയുള്ള പാഠ്യപദ്ധതി ചട്ടക്കൂട് വികസിപ്പിക്കുന്നതിനായി രൂപീകരിച്ച കോർ കമ്മിറ്റിയുടെ ചെയർമാൻ മൂന്ന് പി എച്ച് ഡി മൂന്ന് എം ഫിൽ കൂടാതെ മാനേജർ മാർഗനിർദ്ദേശത്തിലും മേൽനോട്ടത്തിലും നാൽപ്പത്തി ഏഴോളം പ്രബന്ധങ്ങൾ ലഭിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് എഡ്യൂക്കേഷണൽ ഇൻക്ലൂഷനും ടീച്ചേഴ്സ് എഡ്യൂക്കേഷനുമാണ് ഗവേഷണ മേഖലകൾ നിലവിൽ ന്യൂഡൽഹിയിലെ എൻ ഐ ഇ പി എ രൂപീകരിച്ച സ്കൂൾ ലീഡർഷിപ്പ് പ്രോഗ്രാമിന്റെ കോഴ്സ് ഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് കമ്മിറ്റി അംഗമായി പ്രവർത്തിക്കുന്നു യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റിയിലെ സെൻട്രൽ പ്ലേസ്മെന്റ് സെൽ അംഗവും ഫൈൻ ആർട്സ് സൊസൈറ്റിയുടെ കൺവീനറുമാണ് ജമ്മു ആൻഡ് കാശ്മീർ ആൻഡ് ലഡാക്കിനെ കുറിച്ച് സംസാരിക്കുവാൻ മുഖ്യ അതിഥിയായ ഡോക്ടർ കിരൺ മാമിനെ ക്ഷണിക്കുന്നു Dr. Vipin, am I supposed to start now? Uh, yes, ma'am. As I am having a very little knowledge of Malayalam, probably I was able to get something out of uh, Aparna's uh, talk, but not uh, getting fully. Uh, so uh, that's why I'm just asking the, uh, for your permission to start with. Okay. So as uh, this is the fifth lecture in this series, as Dr. Vipin has appraised. So um, when I was preparing for this lecture that what should be talked about uh, today's evening. So I was just wondering, 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 because uh, uh, when we talk about Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh, they are so popular, uh, you know, places that uh, uh, many of the things uh, have been known by many of you. Okay. and uh, one thing to uh, uh, correct on the board like uh, this is the series uh, where uh, the people natives are actually representing uh, representing the states so uh, to uh, you know tell about uh, myself i am not the native of this place i am just working here and but uh, my association with this place uh, with the with jammu kashmir and ladakh is by virtue of my work and i am working here from the past 9 years so 9 uh, years is quite a long time uh, to uh, get acclimatized uh, with the uh, place you are working with and uh, you know uh, but still there are lots of the things which uh, i want to know about this thing and uh, you know whatever i have brought for you it is uh, uh, a kind of uh, my understanding of these three places okay so i'm going to share with you people a, a presentation a brief presentation uh, which i have made for you 
just I'm sharing my screen with you people. The moment you are able to see it, just let me know. Okay, hope you are able to see it. Just confirm somebody because I am not able to uh, um, uh, see you people. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. So, uh, as uh, the presentation has been entitled, you can see uh, this uh, the title of the presentation. I have written Jammu and Kashmir and Inside Out Version. One soul in three bodies. Like an inside out, out version is because of two reasons. Uh, number one, uh, uh, primarily or by definition, I'm an outsider to the state and uh, I'm just uh, trying to explore the state uh, uh, from the past nine years. And also, uh, as uh, you can uh, fundamentally, you know, uh, understand that uh, the second reason for this uh, title is uh, that uh, by virtue of my work, I'm belonging to the state. And that's why, that's why, like, I'm uh, trying to brief about the state to you people. And because of that, also I have kept the title as an inside out version. Okay. And uh, the subtitle is One Soul in Three Bodies. Like, when I joined uh, the Central University of Jammu uh, in 2013, uh, as the popular notion about the state is uh, like uh, uh, if some something is happening in Kashmir, we just uh, think of that it is uh, you know happening in lots of uh, the whole uh, Jammu and Kashmir, uh, in the Ladakh also. Uh, but when I joined 2000, uh, uh, Central University of Jammu in 2013, I came to know that uh, these are actually the three parts which are you know uh, together uh, surviving together they are linked together and uh, you know uh, in spite of their uniqueness uh, all the three parts are unique in their perspective so in spite of their uniqueness they are together they are surviving together and they are you know uh, operating together so uh, that's why i have kept it a subtitle one soul in three bodies like you must be you know wondering how can one soul could be residing in three bodies but in Jammu and Kashmir, when uh, before, like uh, obviously before the uh, uh, separation of Ladakh as a separate unity, uh, they are residing together just as a one soul in three bodies. Intent was same, uh, operating was same. The people over here were very much, you know, connected with themselves. But still, there are three unique identities which were operating from the same space. You can say. So, uh, uh, for that reason, I have just, uh, uh, on the next slide, I have tried to administer, uh, uh, try to uh, uh, reflect upon that how the geography and the administration, you know, uh, here in Jammu and Kashmir and in Ladakh is taking place. When we see the map of Jammu and Kashmir, like I have put it here, uh, uh, you can see easily that land area wise, the largest land area is with the Ladakh now it's a, obviously a union territory but earlier it was also a province so um, uh, the largest land area is with the Ladakh and when we see uh, the Kashmir and the Jammu region like uh, they have been called uh, uh, formally as Jammu region or Jammu division or Jammu province similarly Kashmir region or Kashmir division or Kashmir province similarly the Ladakh region or Ladakh division or you know uh, 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 Ladakh province so uh, now they are uh, Jammu and Kashmir as separate duty and uh, Ladakh is a separate duty but uh, I'm just uh, uh, referring to the nomenclature which was formally there okay so land area wise uh, Ladakh is the largest uh, having the largest land area and uh, as far as Kashmir and Jammu is uh, concerned land area wise the distribution is pretty much same you can you know uh, there is a uh, ratio wise there is uh, uh, you know differences in the uh, uh, amount of land uh, these two uh, provinces are having uh, yet like uh, we can ignore uh, the difference in the land uh, as far as in comparison uh, the uh, Ladakh is compared to. So administratively when we see that uh, there are only two districts in Ladakh, Leh and Kargil but uh, you know when we see the Kashmir uh, province and when we see the Jammu province we are having 10, 10 districts respectively in each of the province like we are having 10 districts in Kashmir province also and we are having uh, 10 districts in Jammu province also. Okay. 
uh, now uh, uh, sometimes before uh, they were a single state and uh, uh, as of uh, present uh, if you talk about the present uh, there are two different un union territories so moving ahead and looking at uh, uh, what is the essence of jammu and kashmir so the three reasons of jammu and kashmir as far as my understanding of uh, jammu and kashmir and ladakh goes kashmir stands for knowledge like i have tried to you know put up uh, 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 my understanding of these three reasons uh, into something which is relatable so i found that kashmir somehow could be described as the hub of the knowledge similarly jammu could be described as the hub of the joy or vibrance like culture of jammu is a little more vibrant in comparison of kashmir and in comparison of ladakh so the beauty of culture of kashmir and ladakh is equally you know uh, uncomparable they uh, they could not be parameterized but still when i look at jammu jammu uh, i found or i discovered jammu as uh, uh, having lots of joy and vibrance in its culture similarly uh, ladakh stands for love and peace like uh, you could say that uh, this could be because of uh, religious bending also we are having buddhism uh, uh, lots of buddhism over there so uh, and uh, moreover uh, this is near to tibet also and uh, this is having the uh, basically the philosophical and uh, if we talk about uh, the religious uh, you know philosophy which is overruling ladakh is uh, the buddhist philosophy and thereby i uh, feel that i have uh, visited uh, kashmir also and have visited ladakh dark also and uh, uh, having the uh, primary data about the people of the dark and kashmir also so uh, i could say easily or uh, this is uh, my understanding of ladakh that uh, if uh, somebody uh, uh, you know ask me that how would you define ladakh i would define ladakh as a place where love and peace is residing so moving ahead and uh, slowly and uh, gradually we would discover uh, during uh, my presentation and more over i am also expecting some kind of interaction from you people so uh, 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 we will discover that why i am saying that kashmir is the hub of knowledge why i am saying that jammu uh, could be equated uh, with the uh, word joy and vibrance and why the ladakh i am equating with the love and peace okay now moving ahead what is uh, you know unique about this place like when i am uh, 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 using the term place i am invariably mentioning all the three provinces or now the two uts jammu and kashmir ut and the ladakh union territory so uh, uh, what is the unique about this place which is cross cross board in all the three places uh, uh, about which i am talking okay so uh, as uh, 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 it has been popularly you know uh, uh, remember that uh, somebody has said uh, agar kahi uh, is dharti par swarg hai there is uh, a heaven on this uh, earth it is there in kashmir jammu and kashmir probably and uh, ladakh also it is there in kashmir it is there in kashmir so kashmir or uh, you know you, you know uh, uh, this is famous about the uh, uh, this place that uh, this is a paradise like paradise on earth and why it is uh, called paradise not only because of the scenic beauty uh, this place is having like jammu is equally beautiful uh, kashmir is equally Uh, uh the beauty of its own kind so we can't say we can can't undermine any of the region uh, uh, on the parameter of beauty um, uh, they are having beauty of their own kind and uh, why it is, this place is called the paradise of on earth it is because of the natural beauty it is having and moreover uh, the air is so clean and the natural resources are so 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 uh, uh, concentrated over here not only the vegetation i'm talking about the in terms of vegetation rather i am also talking about in terms of the mineral resources we are having you must be knowing uh, if somebody is uh, you know uh, out of you must be pursuing uh, uh, geography or uh, any stream of physics or sciences or chemistry per se or uh, something uh, related to that you must be knowing that greater himalayas are very enriched in uh, the petroleum uh, reserve reservoirs so more over minerals more over petroleum and many many of the things are here like uh, there uh, this region is very rich in uh, you know um, uh natural resources also and uh, uh, i could say that the natural resources and the beauty also is somehow unexplored and untapped uh, in this area so uh, the uniqueness which is uh, uh, you know uh, explains this place is uh, that uh, this could be termed as uh, the beauty the resources the availability and the things and the culture over here is uh, uh, like that which is equating or uh, you know drawing an uh, analogy about this place as an uh, paradise on the earth uh then uh, talking about the climate climate uh, is uh, different in the different part like uh, uh, 
you know there is a place called lakhanpur which is adjacent to uh, the punjab it is on the border of punjab and jammu and kashmir so uh, uh, the people like there is a jo- joke popular about that uh, about the jammu and kashmir and the understanding of the people about this place about the jammu and kashmir and why i am uh, you know referring to that joke over here when i am talking of the climate uh, is also having reasons so uh, 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 i am talking about the borders i am talking about the lakhanpur border uh, which is adjacent to the punjab the moment we cross punjab and uh, enter uh, uh, into the jammu and kashmir lakhanpur is the first uh, uh, city uh, which situated in the district katwa of jammu and kashmir and uh, there is a written a board uh, welcome to uh, the state of jammu and kashmir or welcome to jammu and kashmir and the moment uh, tourist or the people visiting who are outsiders who are you know uh, visiting jammu and kashmir for the first time they start to put on their woolen uh, you know uh, at the moment they see welcome to jammu and kashmir uh, uh, on the uh, perception that uh, obviously jammu and kashmir would be in hilly area and the environment or the weather is pretty much cool over here in comparison of the other states but this is not the truth we are having different kind of attitudes like we are having valleys also we are having plains also and we are having a cold desert ladakh uh, is uh, known to be a cold desert okay so uh, this climate is we are having different attitude like uh, if we talk about kashmir the most of the part of kashmir is situated in the greater himalayas naturally uh, some of the district like uh, district rajouri district punch bhadrava um and uh, uh, even udhampur uh, they, even uh, some of the part of kathua also uh, like we are having uh, a good amount of hills over there and the uh, environment or the climate uh, in these areas are pretty much different from the areas which we are uh, you know uh, uh, having uh, there in uh, jammu district or uh, some other district so we are having plains also we are having different kind of altitude also we are having valleys also and we are having cold desert also so there is a variety of climate which uh, we people are enjoying in the same uh, length and breadth and that's why i was saying that uh, there is a, a, a one soul in uh, three bodies are situating so uh, uh, climate is good for horticulture it is very good for floriculture you must have uh, heard about the tulip garden of kashmir now a uh, similar kind of tulip garden have also been uh, uh, you know uh, developed in jammu area also uh, in two of the districts of jammu area also so uh, the climate is very good for horticulture. culture floriculture also apiculture also you must be knowing about that uh, the honey of uh, kashmir region is world famous and sericulture also like uh, we are having uh, uh, silk production also in this uh, um, area of jammu and kashmir uh, then uh, talking about the flora and fauna of jammu and kashmir so uh, it ranges from thorn bushes of uh, the arid uh, plains uh, to the temperate and alpine of the uh, at the higher altitude i give a talk about uh, you know kashmir we are having different kind of vegetation over there if we talk about uh, jammu we are having different kind of uh, vegetation over here in the hilly areas as well as in the plains so, so um, uh, vegetation crops and uh, different kind of things are very different like uh, um, there is an uh, uh, place called udhampur if you google about udhampur uh, you could be uh, um, you know uh, you, you you could be get, getting the answer of uh, one local uh, locally produced cheese which is called kaladi over here okay and why that uh, uh, kaladi is only produced in udhampur area of uh, 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 jammu region or the jammu and kashmir province it is only because of the region that uh, uh, they are having a good production of uh, uh, milk over there and uh, moreover uh, um, along with the milk they are also having you know uh, they, that is that milk is very high in uh, uh, fat content and uh, that uh, local uh, cheese which is called kaladi uh, uh, that milk is very suitable to make kaladis and because uh, uh, they produce high amount of milk to preserve that milk they convert it into kaladi and preserve it for the longer period so uh, uh, when we talk about flora and fauna and when we talk about vegetation is it, it is very different in uh, ladakh also it is very different in uh, kashmir also and uh, they are very different in uh, you know jammu province also so uh, we are having uh, um, uh, different vegetation at the higher altitudes and uh, the, uh, uh, the the forest of devdar pine fir walnut below almond and cedar uh, like uh, when we uh, go uh, on the hills we get 
uh, lots of devdar and pine over here fir also walnuts also willows also almond almond and cedar are also in the hill area so uh, the jungles or the forest uh, mainly consist of these kind of uh, vegetation and uh, in the uh, 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 plain areas there are the, the vegetation is of different kind and kashmir and jammu province along with ladakh is known for world class uh, cultivation of apples walnuts almonds saffron you must be knowing about like uh, saffron is very popular in the southern region of uh, india uh, uh, lots of people demands kashmiri saffron uh, and uh, they get it uh, you know purchase from kashmir and uh, consume it uh, in the southern areas of uh, uh, in, in fact in whole of india because of uh, different kind of uh, utilities of the saffron so kashmir is known for saffron also jammu and uh, kashmir region is known for saffron also honey also and uh, there is one famous variety of uh, rice which is a very very fragrant rice and which is in world famous class of basmati uh, and uh, it is cultivated in jammu region the rs pura sector and uh, the rice is known uh, by the name of rs pura rice you could search on the google uh, the basmati of rs pura and you would uh, be uh, you know knowing about the varieties what kind of specification it is having and this is a world famous uh, you know basmati uh, which is used and very costly and uh, used all over it, it, it is of export quality and uh, then uh, we are also uh, the jammu and kashmir region is also known for the cultivation and production of kidney beans which is locally called rajma and uh, uh, the bhadrua uh, 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 that's uh, 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 zone is uh, uh, very much famous for the cultivation of rajma and the red bhadrua which is produced in uh, red rajma which is produced in or red kidney beans which are produced in bhadrua are the world famous and the most superior kind of you know kidney beans uh, uh, in india also and they are very tasty very distinct distinctive in their taste uh, uh, when we talk about the taste of kidney beans okay moving ahead uh, uh, what kind of water resources we are having so um, i have uh, when we i talk about the river line i have just uh, mentioned uh, the name of the uh, like uh, uh, rivers who are having uh, the length of or the coverage of more than 200 kilometers of area so uh, these uh, could be understood as the major rivers and the tributaries and the small rivers are many in jammu and kashmir and also in ladakh so uh, when we talk about the uh, rivers which are having uh, uh, more than the uh, uh, length of uh, more than 200 kilometers or who covers the areas of uh, uh, more than 200 kilometers so prime region uh, prime rivers uh, um, in jammu and kashmir are jhelum chenab tavi indus indus uh, uh, primarily is situated in uh, the ladakh area and uh, there is uh, one famous festival also um, of uh, in ladakh area which is called sindhu darshan festival and uh, uh, people uh, uh, come to uh, ladakh visit ladakh from the whole part of india and also from outside india uh, to take part in that uh, festival which is to celebrate the presence of the uh, this uh, river uh, sindhu or indus uh, river in the area of ladakh then there is nubra uh,
എല്ലാവരും വെയിറ്റ് ചെയ്യുക മേഡത്തിന് നെറ്റ്വർക്ക് പ്രശ്നം ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു ഉണ്ടെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിരുന്നു അതാണെന്നാ തോന്നുന്നത് ഞാൻ മെസ്സേജ് അയച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് I'm back guys because there was a power cut over here so I must have lost connection now it has also come and uh, soon I will again lost connection because my device is going to switch over the connection again so let me first okay so are you able to hear me yes ma'am okay so up till which point uh, you people was uh, able to hear me what was the last point you people heard
मैम काइंडली शेयर योर स्लाइड I'm just back on my mobile device, so uh, probably you people were able to. We were just discussing about the lakes we are having in Jammu and Kashmir, so I'm just going to present my uh, screen with you people so that uh, you could have about uh, you know uh, uh, this idea of what we were talking of when we left, and uh, this is about the water line. 
like just give me a sec to play this yeah so we have talked about the uniqueness also and uh, uh, we have talked about the yes we were talking just talking about the water line we are having so like uh, i have uh, been uh, discussing about the lakes we are having here and i was just uh, telling you what are the different lake lakes which are there uh, are you able to hear me please confirm somebody somebody yes okay so yes uh, we were talking about the wooler lake and we were uh, just uh, discussing about the mansar and surinsar and mansabal lake like these are the lakes which are also having a, a you know a, a, a religious importance with them uh, the sanasar is an artificially created lake and uh, which is there in the famous hill station uh, named patni tap uh, in jammu uh, region and then we are having sheshnag lake uh, which is there in kashmir anantnag and the saksar lake uh, could be understood as the uh, uh, you know uh, seven the culmination of or conjugation of the uh, seven small alpine lakes uh, in the gandharbal district of uh, kashmir region and uh, when we move ahead and uh, just look at the eatreeks and drink delights of uh, jammu kashmir and ladakh region we are having a whole variety of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, culinary and uh, uh, eat uh, uh, treats uh, which Uh, most of you uh, must be knowing about the kahwa which is very much popular in uh, uh, the kashmir region and uh, uh, the drink is known to give uh, an instant warmth to your body and it is very nutritious also it is a kind of uh, a sweet tea kind of thing but actually this is not tea um, uh, some dry fruits have been added into it uh, like badam uh, uh, almonds uh, have been added into it and uh, uh, sometimes jaggery or sometimes sugar has been added to it and sometimes honey also uh, is used to prepare kahwa so there are different kahwa tradition in uh, different districts of kashmir and then uh, there is a very famous uh, tea uh, which is called noon cha noon means salt and cha means a uh, chai a uh, uh, tea and uh, i i suppose like i have traveled a whole lot of india approximately and i haven't came across with uh, this kind of uh, tea uh, anywhere uh, else in uh, uh, indian uh, 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 area uh, except uh, um, in uh, himachal um, in uh, lahol spiti and in jammu kashmir and in ladakh so uh, uh this is in salty pink tea you can say um, uh, some tea uh, which have been you know cooked 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 cook, cook, for pretty much longer period uh, till it changes its color to a dark pink uh, state and uh, then a uh, salt is added to it and uh, sometimes uh, uh, butters is also added to it like uh, when we uh, talk about the ladakhi version of noon cha butter is invariably added into it and when we talk about the uh, uh, kashmiri version of the noon cha then uh, probably sometimes the butter is added and uh, uh, many a times butter is also not added okay and uh, the people over here is uh, uh, are very fond of uh, noon cha especially in hilly areas like when we talk about kashmir province uh, the whole of kashmir province when we talk about the rajouri punch and uh, bhadrava uh, uh, doda districts of uh, 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 jammu and when we talk about the whole of uh, you know uh, ladakh noon cha is very famous uh, kind of uh, staple drink like we used to have in rest of the india tea and coffee uh, people similarly uh, start their day with noon cha or uh, the salty tea salty pink tea you can say with butter or without butter like in ladakh in the ribi butter is uh, consumed uh, in uh, uh, pretty much uh, quantity reason being the uh, the uh, what to say the roughness in the year and uh, which creates a kind of deficiency in the people and that's why the moisture uh, getting your body moistured is very much essential and very much important and thereby uh, the moon cha um, have been an addition of butter into it mainly in ladakh region so uh, chai and uh, there is also a, a dish which is called uh, a beverage which is called chai chang uh, could be understood as a local beer or local uh, uh, you know uh, liquor kind of thing uh, which is uh, 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 having an auspicious value also in in most of the festival which are there in ladakh chang is uh, you know used and otherwise also to give you relaxation and other kind of things uh, you could understand is in um, uh, 
a drink uh, which is used to celebrate the festivity and which is otherwise used to relax uh, 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 people and uh, give warmth to your body then uh, when we talk about vegetarian prominence uh, there is a famous dish which is famous uh, across board in over uh, over india and uh, also outside india which is called dam aloo you must have uh, uh, heard about this dish dam aloo dam aloo is a vegetarian dish which uh, has its roots uh, uh, primarily in kashmir but it is um, now um, um, have been eaten in uh, the whole of the india as well as uh, it is very famous in uh, jammu also and in ladak also uh, dam aloo primarily is an uh, 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 potato dish which is uh, you know cooked uh, on the low uh, heat and low uh, flame uh, and uh, uh, with uh, different kind of spices then there is nadru yakni nadru means uh, this stem of the lotus you must have uh, heard uh, about the stem of the lotus uh, this dish is uh, you know prepared with the stem of the lotus and uh, yakni means uh, the curd so uh, this dish is prepared with the curd and the uh, stem of the lotus then there are nadru kofte like uh, pakoras kind of things or fried uh, you know uh, uh, balls kind of things Uh, uh, prepared with different kind of spices and gravy is called nadru kofta and again uh, with the lotus stem only then there is akshag akshag is not available anywhere else in uh, you know uh, india uh, again except moreover uh, 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 in there some of the regions of uh, um, himachal and uh, um, uh, there is some some of the most hilly areas Uh, but uh, particularly hot shag is there in kashmir itself and uh, this would be you know understood as the staple diet of uh, kashmiri people over there then kadam is also kind of uh, this is popularly known as or in the other part of areas it is known as the pahadi by the name of pahadi palak like uh, uh, the spinach from the mountain which is having heavy roots and those roots are also edible uh, like uh, people uh, prepare um, uh, pickles of uh, kadam people uh, prepare uh, that uh, 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 they use the, uh, the the leaves of kadam also uh, to eat and uh, for cooking and uh, they prepare it with gosht also like uh, with the uh, nonveg also and uh, this is otherwise is a kind of staple dish for kashmiris staple vegetarian uh, uh, item for kashmiris and uh, a very popular uh, thing also in kashmir then we used to have ambal ambal is the uh, 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 you know primarily a dokri dish and uh, which is made of pumpkin and tamarind and uh, different kind of spices are used and it is a kind of spicy and uh, ten, um, a uh, tangy curry kind of thing okay uh, but this is a thick in consistency then there is rajma like uh, curry of kidney beans then uh, kadhai uh, kadhi uh, they are having a different kind of curry tradition like uh, uh, the uh, it, it, it is prepared with the curd itself then dahi aloo again potato cooked with the, uh, this uh, uh, curd you can say then thukka thukka is uh, 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 these thukka momos kayu tingmo chugati and uh, uh, basically these all are you know uh, made in uh, non vegetarian forms also but in vegetarian forms also they are very popular in the regions of ladakh leh and kargil and uh, then churpi is a kind of yak cheese which has been uh, produced by the milk of domesticated yaks and uh, this is also famous there in uh, 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 um, uh, in ladakh region and moreover i was talking about noomcha and the butter added into it so this uh, you know the butter added into the noomcha or the salty pink tea is uh, not actually the normal butter rather the churpi is added to the noomcha in, in ladakh okay then there is khambir khambir is also kind of uh, you can uh, understand it uh, just like uh, a bread kind of thing which uh, is uh, used to be eaten with the uh, gravies of different kind and uh, then we are having chuli chuli is uh, actually uh, the jam uh, formed from the apricot so this is popularly known as in the other parts of india it is popularly known as apricot jam and in the local language of uh, ladakhi people it is uh, called as chuli and then we are having non Uh, vegetarian uh, uh, delights which is uh, shark gosht like uh, uh, the uh, non vegetarian gosht uh, gosht basically meat is cooked with different kind of uh, leafy vegetables then there is uh, we are having rista rista is also a kind of meat preparations 
then Kashmiri Vajwan you must have uh, 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 heard about. Then we are having kebabs also over here like uh, we used to have in sa- southern uh, region of India. Then uh, we are having different kind of non-vegetarian curries like uh, shark gosh, rista, vajwan, kebabs. We are having the whole lot, lot variety of uh, different kind of uh, uh, meat preparation in Kashmir because uh, primarily uh, people in Kashmir are non-vegetarian uh, and uh, moreover the people in Ladakh uh, uh, region are also non-vegetarian people. So, uh, we are having a whole lot of variety of different kind of meats uh, which are uh, presenting in uh, Kashmir region and therefore, uh, 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 you know, uh, we are having a different kind of like, uh, they used to cook it with different kind of vegetables and thereby, you know, they play with the taste with the meat over there, okay. And uh, then we are having thukka like I have told already, these are uh, 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 available in vegetarian form also, non-vegetarian form also, momos, kayu, kingo and chugati. These all are uh, also, uh, you know, uh, uh, available in non-vegetarian form also. Uh, uh, one thing to notice about this Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh region that uh, uh, we are having a places where vegetation is uh, in the uh, cold uh, weather is next to impossible and uh, the people of Akkar, uh, 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 mainly of Kashmir and uh, Leh Ladakh, used to, you know, preserve the vegetables for the odd season, like they get it dry in the season, main season, when the, the vegetables are cultivated and the fruits are cultivated. And uh, uh, then they uh, keep it safely and they use it in the cold season or in the winters when uh, uh, the possibilities of vegetation is not there. And uh, you must be knowing about Ladakh that, uh, and also about uh, some of the part of the Kashmir that uh, they used to get blocked during winter season because of extreme cold and uh, because of the snowfalls. So, uh, Life is uh, becomes very slow during winter, and uh, you are not uh, going to get the pro- proper nutrition also because uh, uh, whatever you say, you cannot sustain over meat over a period of time because it is heavy in digestion and, uh, uh, and uh, di- uh, the different kind of added problems are there if you consume uh, only non-vegetarian products. So you need to have fiber also. A good quantity of fiber is also required. Water is also required, and to uh, compensate that defi- deficiency, they have included in their color skills, uh, uh, the preservation skills they have included into it and the preservation styles are very different. Okay, so uh, 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 if we would be having some more time, we, would, we, we, we could, uh, you know, uh, discuss about the preservation uh, 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 modalities of uh, Kashmiris and Ladakhi people, which they are, uh, uh, you know, using to preserve uh, the things for the odd season. Uh, moving ahead, when we talk about the faiths and beliefs, like we are having different different kind of religion which are prevailing in the Jammu Kashmir region and the Ladakh region, like we are having Islam uh, prevalent in uh, Jammu Kashmir and Ladakh region. We are having Sanatanis, uh, which could be understood as uh, the Hindu religion. Uh, we are having uh, Sikhs also, and we are having Christians also. You must be wondering that where the Christians are mainly situated, uh, whether they are in Kashmir, whether they are in Jammu, and whether they are in Ladakh. So in both uh, all the three regions. Uh, uh, some amount of Christian minorities are there, and uh, uh, this is a, it is a recent, uh, uh, rather recent phenomena of getting people converted into, into Christianity. So, uh, though Christianity is not having a very older root, but uh, yes, uh, if you talk about the faiths and beliefs, so Christianity is also existing as a prominent faith and uh, belief system in uh, uh, the region of Jammu and Kashmir and in Ladakh, but primarily Islam, Hindus, and Sikhs are there in the majority. Uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the Islamic concentration, so Islam is prevalent in uh, the area, uh, majority of the area of Kashmir. Uh, in uh, uh, one district of Ladakh, like when we talk about Kargil, Kargil is uh, majorly a, a you know a, a Muslim prominence area. And uh, uh, when we talk about uh, some of the districts of Jammu, like uh, when we talk about uh, 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 Kishkwar, when we talk about Rajori, when we talk about Punch, uh, uh, though these are tribal concentrated population districts, but yes, Islam uh, has been observed by most of the people who are residing in these districts of uh, Jammu region also. So uh, prevalent, like uh, we are having different kind of contextualized profiling, which I have just discussed about you. And uh, there is a question uh, 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 from uh, you people. Uh, do you know about what kind of status uh, of the people who follow Islam in uh, JNK they enjoy, whether they are minority or majority? Can anybody tell me? Do the 
Muslims of uh, Jammu and Kashmir have been considered as minority. Like in the rest of the India, they are considered as minority. We used to, uh, you know, uh, uh, refer Muslims as the minority community. Whether uh, they are minority in Jammu and Kashmir or not, this is a question which has to be answered from your part, guys. Anybody knows about that? At least majority. you can guess. Majority. Gee, yes. They are in majority and uh, Islamic people, the people who follows uh, Islam, um, uh, doesn't count to the minority in Jammu and Kashmir. So Islamic people or the people who, who are Muslim or following Islam have been considered as majority in the state of Jammu and Kashmir or the union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. So, moving ahead, uh, uh, how, what kind of dresses and material identities they share, then uh, 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 the jewellery, when we talk about the jewellery, uh, the pro metal which uh, 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 prominently used in the uh, jewellery attire of uh, the people of Jammu and Kashmir and in Ladakh uh, uh, is uh, primarily silver. Then we also use gold uh, and when we talk about the Ladakh region, then minimalistic metal use is there um, observed in the uh, Ladakh region uh, in the making of ornaments and uh, the jewellery which the people wear, it is because of the influence of uh, 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 this, uh, you can say, uh, 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 the uh, tribal uh, culture and primarily the tribes are situated over there and uh, you must uh, uh, be knowing about uh, the villages or you must not be knowing about the uh, two villages which uh, still claim to be the pure Aryan Brit in the uh, um, area of uh, uh, Kargil and Leh which are situated there. Both of the villages are situated in the district Kargil. So uh, this could be, uh, uh, you know, because of the prominence of the tribal culture which is uh, um, in prominence in the region of Ladakh. So beads have been used or minimalistic use of metal, use of metal, silver and gold is observed in the region of Ladakh. And uh, uh, we are having a different kind of distinct like uh, if we see to a person we could easily you know demarcate that uh, this lady is a married lady this uh, person belongs to the region of Kashmir by um, merely uh, uh, looking at their dresses by merely looking at the jewelry they are wearing uh, uh, we could easily understand that which show, uh, uh, which part of the Jammu and Kashmir and uh, Ladakh region they are belonging to so uh, you know we are having a, a different kind of jewelry tradition in Kashmir uh, for Muslims and for Hindu Kaskar uh, 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 mainly the ladies and uh, uh, then we are having a different kind of you know um, jewelry tradition in, uh, for Dogris and for the tribes of Ladakh region which is under uh, Tibetan uh, influence or uh, you can say that it is having more proximity to the Tibetan culture uh, and uh, having Buddhist influence also so uh, jewelry tradition are categorically different in uh, these three regions and uh, we are having a long uh, uh, you know you must have seen the Kashmiri ladies they got pierced within the pinna of uh, this this outer layer of their ear in the middle itself and a long uh, uh, attire a long thread is hanging which is having a small pendant kind of thing um, uh, at its down string uh, made of gold so uh, this is a mandatory ornament uh, which has to be worn uh, by uh, wear by the uh, married ladies of kashmiri hindus and this is called uh, deja harus or deji harus okay harus matlab har har means uh, the ornament uh, which hangs hangs in the neck itself hangs in the ears itself so this is a compulsory ornament which has to be wear by all the you know uh, 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 the hindu uh, married hindu ladies in uh, uh, the uh, region who, uh, who who belongs to the uh, region of kashmir itself okay then uh, we are having, uh, when we talk about the Muslim ladies of Kashmiris, then they are having big, big danglers kind of earrings, uh, a different kind of, you know, uh, 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 jewelry, which is mainly made of silver. And uh, uh, the the scarf tying uh, pattern, like uh, the headgear also uh, different for, for Kashmiri Hindus and Kashmiri Muslims, uh, uh, whether we talk about the ladies or whether we talk about the gents, uh, um, these uh, attires are different for uh, both the uh, people. So uh, when we talk about the uh, physical attires or we talk about the dresses, then uh, uh, the people in Kashmir, you 
used to wear feral feral is a long uh, kurta kind of thing which is made of uh, woolen cloth and uh, beneath that uh, they used to wear pajamas if they are uh, men they used to wear pajamas and uh, if they are uh, women they used to wear salwar and uh, uh, men used to tie turban which is different for uh, different uh, community and different religions like muslims wear a different kind of turban hindu wear a different kind of turban and uh, if you talk about gujjar which is in prominent tribe like uh, uh, nomadic tribe uh, in situated in jammu and kashmir so uh, mm-hmm. uh, they used to tie a different kind of turban so clearly we can demarcate that uh, which uh, group they are belonging to by merely looking at their attire and uh, the, uh, the 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 muslim ladies uh, when we talk about the headgear of muslim ladies what they wear on their head so uh, instead of wearing dupatta they used to wear a scarf which is called abaya and abaya is tied uh, behind the head and uh, the hindu ladies used to wear is a cap kind of thing and over there they used to wear a dupatta kind of thing which is called taranga and uh, taranga is a very prominent attire which is uh, uh, which 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 is having a distinctive importance uh, for the married ladies and they have to uh, wear that throughout their life after marriages okay then when we talk about jammu region jammu uh, in jammu both the men and women uh, wear sukhnas sukhnas are a kind of salwar and uh, like uh, bottom we can say the 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 uh, narrow bottom the uh, that's uh, 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 the things which we wear be- uh, uh, beneath our kurtas and uh, then they used to wear kurtas and pagis so this is the attire for male and uh, uh, the women are having used to wear a, a heavy gota uh, patta and uh, uh, the the uh, kurtas of primary color like red and green uh, uh, used to be symbolize the typical dogri suits for women uh, in the dogra region okay and uh, when we talk about the ladakh region then they used to wear a, a long kind of gown type of thing which is uh, either called boncha goes sulma and with a sas sas is a, a kind of belt uh, which is tied like it's a kind of cotton or a, a cloth belt which is tied on the waistline of the people uh, in ladakh uh, uh, irrespective of their religion whether they are muslims or they are buddhist or uh, maybe christian they used to wear a uh, gonchas or pose or sulma with the sas sas is a kind of sash is a kind of uh, uh, belt and uh, this belt is having a different character for male and different character and functions to do with the females okay and gonchas are also you know decorated differently if it has to be uh, worn by the male then it is not have that kind of decoration with the gonchas or the gowns for the female is having okay moving ahead uh, what kind of languages uh, we do have in uh, the region of jammu and kashmir and uh, in the Uh, Ladakh region. Then uh, to talk about the prominent language family, we are having Dardic uh, language family is uh, prevalent over here. Indo-European languages we are having, Indo-Aryan languages we are having, and Indo-Iranian languages, Sino-Tibetan languages families we are also having uh, here in uh, Jammu and Kashmir and in Ladakh region. Obviously, basically when we talk about Sino-Tibetan uh, uh, language families, then uh, this family is mainly prevalent or is referred uh, uh, to. the um, uh, region of ladakh itself and when we talk about the spoken languages the languages with the people of jammu and kashmir and ladakh uh, use in to, in their day to day conversation so people uh, whether they are muslims of kashmir or hindus of kashmir or christians more over in kashmir uh, they use uh, for their day to day conversation the language which has been named as kosher or kosari uh popularly and uh, it is uh, also having a script uh, which is called which is named as sarda script and uh, when you you know uh, 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 try uh, when you uh, try to get the more information about this language you uh, will get uh, uh, a fact about the sarda script that uh, it is also uh, coming under the endangered script for uh, you know uh, indian language so in the way you can say that kosari or kosher language is also a kind of endangered language which needs to be protected and uh, the lots of literature like i have in the beginning of my talk uh, told you about that uh, uh, this uh, 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 kashmir is known for its knowledge hub the most of the literature of kashmiri uh, 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 culture is uh, created in sarda script and uh, because uh, the people who know 
to uh, decipher or to read sardar script are very less um, uh, in uh, uh, the jammu and kashmir region and in whole of india so this, this has been entered into the endangered scripts of uh, um, uh, indian languages so uh, then uh, we are having uh, dogri which is prevalent in jammu region then we are having pahadi which is also probably prevalent in jammu region gojri gojri is also prevalent in jammu region because the most of the tribal districts like i have talked about uh, punch i have talked about rajori they are uh, situated in uh, uh, jammu region and uh, the languages which people speaks uh, in, um, uh, here in these districts primarily is gojri uh, then there is kashtwari kashtwari is prevalent in kishtwar district of jammu and then bhadrawai bhadrawai is obviously spoken in bhadrawar district which is adjacent to kashmir um, the borders uh, you know uh, uh, shared with the kashmir region also and uh, the district is fall or the place is fall in uh, uh, jammu region itself then rambani which is prevalent in ramban area of jammu then pogli pogli uh, is prevalent in uh, ladakh punchi is uh, you know uh, 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 spoken in uh, punch district then uh, ladakhi ladakhi again is related with the uh, 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 land of ladakh then purgi balti boti uh, are uh, again uh, related with ladakh and then uh, if we talk about the official language of uh, jammu and kashmir it is urdu and uh, many people uh, you know converseate or do, do their uh, day to day conversation in hindi language also and many Many people speaks uh, English language also, and uh, when we talk about the languages of official communication, there are primarily three. Like uh, uh, first language is um, uh, which binds obviously India uh, somehow, and it has been uh, though given the status of uh, co-official language in the Constitution of India. but still uh, we can't deny that it is a binding language uh, as far as the india as a country is uh, known and which is english then uh, the official work of uh, jammu and kashmir region um, excluding ladakh happens in urdu language all the documents major documents are prepared there in urdu language and uh, you know uh, when we go for the state uh, 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 the services in jammu and kashmir then knowing urdu reading and writing uh, proficiency in urdu is compulsory ability or the skill which is then and there if you want to if you are targeting uh, some job in jammu and kashmir which is uh, you know out from the public service commission of jammu and kashmir so to get into the uh, government jobs of jammu and kashmir you need to know the urdu language then the hindi language is also uh, prevalent for the official communication okay moving ahead uh, when we talk about the popular places so i have categorized these popular places into four category uh, some of them are having historical and archaeological importance some of them are having religious importance important some of them are having uh, scenic importance and uh, some of them are offering uh, adventures treks and sports adventure uh, so historical importance and archaeological when we talk about historical importance and archaeological importance uh, the all the uh, palaces over here forts over here we are having a hell lot of uh, forts palaces uh, and uh, moreover uh, the uh, relics also of different time like we are having uh, many uh, buddhist the uh, um uh this uh, relics uh, and are uh, which are of uh, archaeological importance uh, over here um, like uh, we are having in buddhist site in uh, uh, in uh, Uh, this uh, Jammu region also um, in the place called Aknu and uh, in Ladakh also many Buddhist sites are there and uh, you must be surprised to know that one of the Buddhist council also happened in Kashmir so we are having some Buddhist sites in Kashmir also and then uh, um, you know uh, we are having uh, the places of uh, religious importance uh, you must be knowing or uh, you may get surprised by knowing that Jammu is called uh, as the uh, 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 10th city of temples so uh, uh, there are very much famous temples in jammu and kashmir including amarnath shrine including uh, 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 you know uh, this vishnu devi holy shrine including uh, kheer bhavani temple which is situated in delhi and which is which is having great importance for the people uh, for the hindu people who were there and who are there in kashmir and uh, we are also having martand sun temple and the famous shankaracharya temple which exemplifies the unity of the 
the most eastern part of the northern part of india and the most southern part of india so it joins uh, uh, the east Uh, the north and the south of indian uh, india as a country so we are having shankaracharya temple also then uh, uh, avarnath cave also vishnu devi shrine i have told about then uh, ranbireshwar uh, temple which is very much there in the uh, heart of the jammu city and uh, uh, this is the pro- this is probably the biggest shiva temple um, in uh, the asian region and uh, then we are having a peer ko cave peer ko cave is having uh, a relevance related to ramayana period uh, it is assumed that uh, this cave is of uh, you must be knowing about jambant in uh, the character in uh, uh, you know uh, ramayana uh, who was the advisor of uh, the council of uh, ram when uh, he uh, uh, tried to conquer uh, 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 the lanka to get sita back okay so uh, peerpo is having that kind of uh, importance with it then we are having a famous bahu fort over here which is again having a religious as well as a, a, a strategic relevance uh, attached to it then uh, we are having ragunath temple ragunath temple uh, is again a very famous uh, there are different kind of you know incidents related with ragunath temple so around if you explore the history of um, uh, you know uh, history uh, from of uh, 20 to 25 years down the line you must be getting a mention about ragunath temple um, um, uh, uh, you must be knowing about the number of uh, indian uh, um, hindu god and goddesses is this 33 crores okay so ragunath temple is uh, the one temple which is having the representation all uh, of all the is uh, the deities uh, which are numbered 33 crores uh, of uh, hindus okay so uh, then we are having hazrat bal dargah which is there in uh, you know um, uh, kashmir uh, then we are having charare sharif we are having jamia masjid then we are having shanti stupa and we are also having gurdwara patthar sahib which is a shrine for uh, 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 sikh people and then we are having uh, uh, takot uh, metho these all are buddhist uh, mon- monasteries then tikshe monasteries and many more okay then scenic uh, 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 as far as the scenic uh, places or the popular scenic popular places are concerned we are having mughal garden which is uh, which gets open for in this period of time and which is situated there in kashmir then we are having sonmar gulmar anantnag then we are having bhadrava which is called mini kashmir and which is situated in jammu region and uh, then we are having district rajouri punch katwa you know uh, scenic beauty is not deficient in uh, um, uh, whole of jammu and kashmir wherever you go uh, uh, if i would be able to show you uh, the uh, you know scenery behind me right now and that's one is setting and i am on a little bit hilly area so scenic beauty is very much there like every if, if you are close to nature then scenic beauty is obviously over there so scenic beauty is not deficient there in uh, you know uh, jammu and kashmir but if you talk about the popular places then uh, we there are uh, it is a not comprehensive list but an indicative list of the scenic places uh, scenic popular places in jammu and kashmir then uh, uh, we are also uh, we could also talk about the adventurous places over here which are popular like uh, you must be knowing about the winter games and winter sports uh, which are uh, uh, hosted uh, every year in sonbarg and gulbarg of uh, kashmir then srinagar is also you know uh, offering a many uh, 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 sports kind of activities and treks also then andabal sanasar patni tap sanasar and patni tap both are situated in jammu region katwa uh, there are peaks which are you know snow capped for the whole of the uh, you know uh, year uh, we are having great uh, lakes uh, track of great lakes like these uh, six alpine lakes which i have uh, just talked about with you people mentioned to you people are having a kind of uh, uh, importance as far as the adventure and uh, 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 you know sporting uh, popular popularity uh, is moving ahead if we talk about the popular personalities um, here i have taken the contemporary personalities mostly but uh, we could also go and tap to the history and i just uh, want to mention uh, the two names over here which is related with uh, the region of jammu and kashmir and uh, one must be known to uh, almost everyone in the part of india um, uh, who 
people. Okay, so uh, one is Kalhan. You must have uh, uh, heard about the Raj Tarangini, which is a first official historical development, and Kalhan is considered to be a first official historian in Indian history. Okay, and he belongs to uh, the region of Jammu and Kashmir, and he has written a document which has been entitled as Raj Tarangini. Tarangini is an official history of the region of Jammu and Kashmir. Okay, then uh, uh, there is an uh, 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 this uh, uh, poetess uh, named as Lala Devi or Laleshwari. Uh, uh, she I'm sorry, my connection is getting interrupted again and again. So probably, uh, you know, just sharing my screen again. Yeah. Are you able to see it, guys? Okay. So we were just uh, talking about the popular places in Jammu and Kashmir and uh, we have started uh, uh, mentioning about the popular personalities which are mainly contemporary in Jammu and Kashmir. So um, I was talking about the Laleshwari which is uh, you know known as the mystic poetess. Okay. Uh, she is a uh, devotee of Shiva and uh, you must be knowing about Kashmir that uh, uh, Shaktism like uh, the worship of Shakti and uh, the worship of Shiva is very popular and uh, this uh, place Kashmir um, is uh, mainly known to be established by the Rishi Kashyap and that's why it has been named as Kashmir. And uh, 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 Shaktism is very popular, uh, uh, popularly uh, grown in this area, and this is the known as an hub of uh, Shaktism. And uh, also the Shaktism, as uh, we have talked about the Kheer Bhavani Temple, we have talked about the shrine of uh, this uh, uh, <coughs> Vaishno Devi. So, uh, Shaivism and Sh uh, Shaktism is coexisting in this area and moreover, uh, uh, followers of Vishnu's are also there in this area, but mostly people follow uh, Shiva in this area and uh, the Hindu people follow the uh, Shakti or the Devi in this area. So, Devi Upasak and uh, Shiv Upasak are in majority in this area. So, Laleshwari is also in Shiv Upasak or uh, the, the follower of uh, Shaivism and uh, she, is, she has been, you know, um, uh, 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 popularly known as the mystic poetess of the Kashmir region, Jammu and Kashmir region and she had contributed a lot uh, to the literature of uh, uh, Kashmir. Okay, so um, when we uh, talk about this uh, academics and science, then we are having uh, uh, Lalit Gok, who is known to be an art historian. Then uh, uh, we could uh, uh, take the name of Subhash Kak, which is an um, American computer scientist. Sonam Wangchuk, uh, who is an engineer, inventor, and also an education reformist. You must, uh, every one of you must have seen this uh, movie called Three Beards. So uh, this is influenced uh, from the story of Sonam actually and uh, then we are having Ved Kumar Ghai. Ved Kumar Ved Ghai, uh, Ved Kumari Ghai uh, is a Sanskrit scholar uh, from the region Jammu and uh, she is a recipient of the Nari Shakti award uh, which is uh, uh, known to be the highest civilian award for the women of India and uh, she is uh, also uh, uh, a recipient of uh, Padma Shri award and she is a Sanskrit scholar and she has added a lot to the literature of Sanskrit over here and one thing to mention 
mention over here when we talk about the costly language or the language of day to day communication of kashmiri people it is having an influence of uh, sanskrit over it okay many of the words have been derived or the structure of the language is actually influenced from the language of sanskrit which shows that somewhere down the line the people of kashmir and jammu were uh, uh, you know using sanskrit as this their, their pre- pre- uh, preliminary language and when we talk about the great personalities in art and music then we are having pandit shiv kumar sharma uh, uh, don't need any kind of introduction is a musician then uh, uh, we are having allah rakha uh, 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 Allah Rakha is also a musician. Then we are having Bhajan Sapori. He is also a mus- musician. Dina Nath Wali. He is a famous painter. And then we are having uh, Gulam Rasool uh, Santosh, who is also a painter. Then we are having Kanish Sharma, who is a music director and singer also. Then we are having Kashmir, who is an EDM artist. Uh, this is a new form of art, and uh, this is a youngster who is uh, popularizing it in the region of Jammu and Kashmir. And he is an eminent artist of the region. Then we are. having mc kash who is a rapper and singer also then we are having malika uh, pukraj who is a singer then we are having Bar- uh, vibha saraf who is also a singer and musician then uh, uh, you must be knowing about vn call who is an uh, at present the controller and auditor general of india and uh, he is a padmushan also he is the pinda padmushan award also then to talk about defense forces uh, uh, there are three uh, you know uh, uh, army chief staffs or uh, uh, people uh, like Uh, three major personalities which have uh, the region of jammu and kashmir contributed to indian forces uh, first is general bikram singh who is an ex chief of army staff then there is nirmal chandra which nc which popularly known as he is also an ex army chief uh, of, uh, from this region and then we are having brigadier uh, rajinder singh who is the first mvc recipient uh, from the region moving ahead on films and television the uh, many popular people have been uh, contributed by uh, uh, the region of jammu and kashmir to bollywood uh, in which the most prominent name and the most famous name uh, worldwide also and uh, india wide also is kl sehgal kundal lal sehgal you must be knowing about him who was in singer and actor also in the uh, movies older uh, retro eras movies when in fact uh, uh, after the silent movies the era which was prevalent kundal lal sehgal was a big name uh, over there you must be knowing about anupam kher anupam kher also belongs to the region of jammu and kashmir then uh, the jeevan you must be knowing about the uh, person who popularly known as uh, for his roles as narada and the negative roles in the older movies of uh, bollywood uh, he also belongs to the uh, the region of jammu and kashmir then om prakash om prakash was a character artist uh, uh, the father in older movies in retro movies the movies of uh, 70s and 80s the brother big brother and uh, 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 sometimes a villain sometimes a protagonist uh, he is om prakash and then uh, sanjay suri the famous actor uh, in the contemporary era of bollywood is also from uh, jammu and kashmir vidhu vinod chopra the director and producer is also from the jammu and kashmir then siddharth ka there is an uh, when we were uh, small we were kids uh, a popular uh, series on uh, a morning show talk show you can say uh, used to come on doordarshan which is named as surbhi so siddharth kak uh, uh, was the presenter over there he is also an uh, kashmiri person and uh, he is a television producer and uh, presenter mohit rena like uh, he is uh, famous for his uh, 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 character as lord shiva in the series uh, uh, which is based on shiva and uh, he is also from uh, uh, belongs to jammu and kashmir kunal khemu who is uh, now the relative of uh, 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 you know saif ali khan by virtue of getting married to his uh, uh, sister sara uh, 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 and he also belongs to uh, jammu and kashmir zaira wasim who acted in the movie dangal and also in uh, secret superstar belongs to uh, jammu and kashmir hina khan the famous tv actress um, is also belonging to the state of jammu and kashmir or the uk of jammu and kashmir so there are whole lot of countless number is there uh, uh, which contributes to the films and television uh, uh, from the uh, this region of jammu and kashmir and ladakh then uh, as far as journalism and uh, media is concerned, 
concerned then the famous name from jammu and kashmir is nidhi rajan who is a newscaster law and justice like three ex chief justices are from jammu and kashmir who have uh, been there in the supreme court of india adarsh sen anand then meher chand mahajan and uh, uh, recently uh, the ts thakur then uh, uh, to talk about the literature i have told you about the laleshwari and uh, she was uh, known to be the mystic poetess who is a chevite and uh, then we are having padma sachdev who recently demised and uh, she is also an uh, uh, padma shri recipient and uh, she has also contributed to the uh, life of bollywood as a lyricist and uh, she has um, written many songs for bollywood movies uh, and which have been composed by uh, 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 i'm not getting the name of uh, that uh, composer or uh, uh, let me uh, remind of that and i'll let you uh, know after that ah uh, ravindra jain yes ravindra jain um, the songs were composed by ravindra jain and uh, this was an a uh, very popular if you would google padma sachdev and bollywood song you will get to get the whole list of the songs which have been written by padma sachdev and composed by ravindra jain okay then uh, uh, then we are having ramnath shastri who is known as the father of dogri and dogri literature and has contributed a lot to the dogri literature and this is because of the effort of uh, padma sachdev and uh, uh, it ramna shastri ji that uh, dogri got in, uh, got entry into the eighth schedule of uh, official languages of uh, india and uh, this has been recognized as probably the 22nd language of uh, um, in the eighth schedule of indian constitution and as far as uh, uh, we talk about the sports then uh, we are having chen singh on the board who was in first olympian from jam jam in kashmir and uh, uh, in asian games he was in 2014 bronze medalist in shooting then uh, we are having ranveer jambal who was in mountainer and climbed everest thrice and uh, uh, all the jo jo highest peaks of uh, uh, seven continents hai and he has climbed all those peaks then um, umran malik who is an uh, hot cake these days and he got famous from his contribution from the sunrise hyderabad and uh, he is also i suppose also is the part of the national team now uh, uh, before uh, sometimes back he has been uh, declared as the part of the indian uh, national cricket team also so uh, um, the jammu and kashmir and ladakh region has contributed a lot to uh, uh, the sports uh, life of india um, in that sense also and uh, if we talk about like uh, 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 I haven't here discussed or taken any name about uh, football. You must be, uh, you know, surprised to know that uh, football is also a kind of popular game in uh, the region uh, uh, of Jammu and Kashmir uh, and Ladakh, and uh, very fondly played by the people in Kashmir also. And we are having uh, good players of football who are there in the Indian football team, uh, uh, contributed by the region of Kashmir and also by the region of Ladakh. Um, uh, so uh, you can uh, get their name. also if you google them okay then uh, to talk about this is the probably the last slide of my talk and uh, this is about the artistic expressions like uh, what kind of art are famous uh, you know uh, uh, here uh, uh, from the or what kind of artistic artistic expressions are there which uh, have been from uh, the region of jammu and kashmir and ladakh so music invariably um, is a thing which is uh, you know talked about and uh, you must be surprised to know that uh, the famous uh, nightingale of uh, 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 india uh, uh, lata mangeshkar ji has also given her voice to the dogri songs like uh, her uh, uh, there is a complete album of uh, lata mangeshkar ji Uh, uh which is there in dogri and she has uh, sung for uh, some of the dogri films also and uh, then the basholi painting uh, paint, paintings are there uh, uh, which is uh, uh, famous uh, which which have been contributed by a place called basholi which is situated somehow on the border of uh, um, uh, himachal and uh, 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 in jammu and kashmir uh, uh, it is situated in katwa district and also being touched by the uh, Hima- border of himachal pradesh okay 
so uh, paintings of basolis are about famous and uh, intricate art uh, you could see in basoli paintings and uh, then pottery and clay work is also famous um, uh, here in jammu and kashmir then embroidery you must have uh, been knowing about uh, the hand embroidery or the thread embroidery which is influenced by the, uh, the, uh, the the kashmiri kadhai you must have been heard about so embroidery is also famous uh, in uh, you know uh, uh, from the uh, jammu and kashmir itself when uh, life gets slow in winters then uh, the women of uh, especially the kashmiri women used to utilize the extra time with them to uh, you know do embroidery to do handloom and kind of things and uh, uh, when the season comes they used to you know use it for their uh, you know um, uh, 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 livelihood and other kind of things and uh, uh, this uh, embroidery work of, from kashmir gets exported also and uh, it is available in whole of india also so there is intricate embroidery work very fine and uh, you know uh, is done with different kind of threads primarily the cotton threads has been used to do this uh, kashmiri embroidery then pashmina you must be knowing about this is a uh, kind of you know fiber uh, extracted from the pashmina goat and uh, that had been converted into pattus pattus is called the uh, uh, length of clothes and uh, then they got stitched and uh, their their value got enhanced is like kashmina uh, uh, we are having uh, uh, this uh, this is very warm kind of cloth which uh, we uh, you know get from pashmina like pashmina is a kind of wool you can you could uh, uh, you know understand like that which is uh, primarily not from uh, uh, these uh, sheep but rather from a pashmina goat which is having long hair and uh, um, uh, pashmina is mainly used in kashmir then we are uh, as i have already talked about uh, we used to uh, uh, use silk also and uh, uh, besides that we are having many uh, you know uh, uh, scenic places over here and artistic expressions with the presentation of uh, uh, um, uh, the the scenic beauty of jammu and kashmir also comes and uh, you must be surprised to know that 17% of the population gets their livelihood from uh, the tourism in jammu and kashmir but still jammu and kashmir uh, and the ladakh region could come under the virgin and uh, unexplored places of uh, india uh, which has lots of potential for tourism which has lots of potential for uh, you know um, um, indigenous knowledge uh, to spread over and uh, which has lots of original ideas and innovative thing but uh, they have yet to be explored so that's why i have uh, you know uh, uh, written in my life last slide that uh, my exploration is continued on the land of knowledge means kashmir on the land of joy means jammu and on the land of love means ladakh so here i just uh, pause my presentation and um, um, if anything which is very specific and to be asked by you people i would love to hear and i would uh, you know love to answer your questions if anything you want to ask specifically thank you ma'am actually no me not and even told you that you have to use it what what hello hello ma'am yeah yeah could you speak a little louder please hello hello thank you ma'am okay aparna any question aparna or you just uh, you can just stop it any curiosity any question if you people want to ask anything which you want to inquire i would uh, try to give uh, response to the best of my knowledge and i am extremely apologetic uh, that uh, we are having a lots of uh, connection interruptions so parna could we close okay ma'am where is uh, your teacher i am here hi yeah. so vipin ji can we close yes ma'am 
Okay, so thank you, Vipinji. Thank you, uh, Bharatiya, under which I have been called to speak about uh, or to represent Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. So thank you all. Thank you, Vipinji, and thank you all the students who have patiently listened to me and uh, you know uh, try to get enriched out. Of നമസ്കാരം മടത്തിൽ ഓഷൻ സെൻ്റർ ഫോർ ഹ്യൂമൻ എൻവോൾവ്മെൻറ്റിൻ്റെ ആഭിമുഖ്യത്തിൽ യൂണിറ്റി ഇൻ ഡൈവേഴ്സിറ്റിയുടെ അഞ്ചാം ഭാഗത്തിൽ ജമ്മു ആൻഡ് കാശ്മീർ ആൻഡ് ലഡാക്ക് എന്ന വിഷയത്തെപ്പറ്റി പ്രസംഗിച്ച സെൻട്രൽ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ഓഫ് ജമ്മു അസിസ്റ്റൻറ്റ് പ്രൊഫസറായ ഡോക്ടർ കിരൺ മാമിനോടുള്ള നന്ദി അറിയിച്ചുകൊള്ളുന്നു മാം ദിസ് വാസ് എൻ ഇൻ ഗ്രേറ്റ് സെഷൻ ഓൾസോ ദിസ് സെഷൻ വാസ് സോ ഇൻഫോർമേറ്റീവ് ആസ് വി ഗോട്ട് എ ലോഡ് ഓഫ് നോളജ് ഓൺ ജമ്മു ആൻഡ് കാശ്മീർ ആൻഡ് ലഡാക്ക് താങ്ക് യു മാം അതോടൊപ്പം ഈ പ്രോഗ്രാമിൽ വെൽക്കം സ്പീച്ച് പറഞ്ഞ മരുതിലാഷൻ സെൻ്റർ ഫോർ ഹ്യൂമൻ എൻവോൾവ്മെൻറ്റ് കോർഡിനേറ്റർ കെ ജി കോളേജ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് കോമേഴ്സിൽ അസിസ്റ്റൻ്റ് പ്രൊഫസറുമായ ഡോക്ടർ വിപിൻ കെ വർഗീസ് സാറിനോടുള്ള നന്ദി അറിയിച്ചുകൊള്ളുന്നു അതോടൊപ്പം ഈ പരിപാടിയെ കമ്പയർ ചെയ്ത് അബർണയോടുള്ള നന്ദി അറിയിച്ചുകൊള്ളുന്നു ഈ പരിപാടിയുടെ പിന്നിൽ പ്രവർത്തിച്ച് എല്ലാവരോടുമുള്ള നന്ദി അറിയിച്ചുകൊള്ളുന്നു ഈ പ്രോഗ്രാം അറ്റൻഡ് ചെയ്ത എല്ലാ എൻ്റെ എല്ലാ പ്രിയ കൂട്ടുകാർക്കും എൻ്റെ നന്ദി അറിയിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് എൻ്റെ വാക്കുകൾ ഉപസംഹരിക്കുന്നു താങ